Thank you. Uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is Pedro Fortuna. Um, I'm here mostly to talk about the client-side client threat um, landscape and the importance of having mitigation measures in place. It's not a surprise that uh, in the last few years, um, the amount of client-side JavaScript that has been growing a lot. And the larger the code, the bigger the attack surface. Um, and, and the big chunk of this, roughly two-thirds, is third-party code, um, mostly from companies that barely have security measures, if any. Um, so what, what kind of threats are we talking about? Uh, let me name a few. Uh, malicious extensions, many in the browser trojans, uh, supply chain attacks, or mage cart that you have been hearing about and code tampering, um, for instance, to, to disable client-side anti-abuse mechanisms or just to change the, the behavior uh, of the user while experiencing the, the website. So I'll be covering a little bit deeper uh, the first three. Malicious extensions is one of the nastiest uh, threats out there. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's meant to, so the users don't realize that by installing extensions, they are exposing their data, and, and attackers are able to also be aware of the navigation patterns of the user. So, and and some, some attackers go even deeper. Uh, they go after the very popular uh, extensions out there. They compromise the account of the developer. They push uh, malicious code to the client side. And everyone becomes uh, updated uh, at once. So in a single blow, they are able to hit hundreds of thousands of users, if not millions. Many of the browser Trojans have been around for more than 10 years now. Uh, it's still the most common type of threat uh, against online banking. And it hasn't changed that much, uh, and mostly because it, it just works. More recently, we have been hearing about MageCart. Um, it's um, there, every week you hear about um, a new uh, supply chain attack, and this is done to, to do credit card scheming, to leak credentials, or to steal PII. And web application owners, they don't have, by default, a mechanism to understand uh, that this is happening, let alone to mitigate it. Um, so this is a very concerning problem, um, and the one that uh, you should care about um, I guess nowadays most major websites are in panic, just trying not to be the, the next British Airways. So how can we tackle this problem? Um, in a nutshell, uh, most of the current approaches uh, fall short. Um, some of you may know subresource integrity, with which you can control the integrity of the, the JavaScript files being loaded in your website. But the problem is that it's hard to keep this updated. Uh, vendors don't like it because they lose the ability of uh, freely updating their, their own code. So it ends up not being used by anyone. You can use content security policy to blacklist the domains uh, from which you allow JavaScript to be loaded from. But as a, a recent Google um, research has published, uh, roughly 94% of all domain blacklisting uh, content security policy is, uh, by definition, bypassable. And plus, CSP headers can be removed by many of the browser Trojans or by malicious extensions, therefore completely disabling the security mechanism. You can also use website polling and domain sinkholing, but this is only meant for fighting supply chain attacks and uh, it's based on signatures, and, and basically it can be easily bypassable just by changing the injection uh, that the attacker is doing. This is what happened in the British Airlines uh, supply chain attack. Uh, they only caught it just like after the, the, the damage was done. Uh, there's also a few solutions based on JavaScript virtualization, um, which is a difficult technique to accomplish and can easily break off the, your code. So what we have been working on and proposing is a, a different approach uh, that basically departs from the assumption that injections or tampering to the website will definitely occur 
and then try to deal with it. So we monitor for DOM injections or tampering. We, we monitor the event handlers for any sort of form jacking or things trying to get in there and steal data. Uh, and native API functions, uh, like things that can send data through the network and can be um, targeted by some sort of man in the middle. So when we find something is off, we launch countermeasures. Uh, we can do a number of different things. We can remove the injection. We can remove the poisoning. And it's all done uh, in time to prevent the attack from being successful. Uh, we also send back telemetry uh, that provides visibility on what's happening on the client side. But let me show you how it works. Um, so on the client side, um, we add a real-time monitoring agent. This is the JavaScript. Uh, the code itself is protected with resilient, polymorphic JavaScript code protection, um, which is necessary because it's in an adversarial situation where um, some malicious code that managed to uh, be injected onto the client side can try to tamper with uh, the solution itself. So it needs to at least be able to uh, very efficiently prevent attack automation against the code. So when we detect something is off, we launch countermeasures. But we all, like I said, we also send back this information to a server component that compares this information with historical data. And if we uh, still think that this is malicious, we can send it off to, through a webhook to the back end of the application, allowing it to trigger additional reactions to what is happening. So we don't have time for a full demo today, so I'll just give you a, a sneak peek, so spoiler alert. By the way, this has nothing to do with Game of Thrones. So if you, ha if you haven't seen the last uh, season, like me, uh, you're good to go. So the, in this screen, you see uh, uh, some application being defended. It's an online banking. It's a new transaction. The form has been tampered with. And here you can see in the dashboard uh, the results of the detection mechanism. So you can see an alert. Don't worry if you can't read that. Uh, it says, on submit poisoning detected. And in this screen, you can see in full detail on the left side, you can see the form that has been affected by this. On the right side, you can see the attacker's code. Usually, it's obfuscated, but this is a demo, so it's meant for you to understand what is going on. So usually, you would need to do some further work to understand it. And this is uh, what could be a, an additional reaction by the web application as it realizes that that form has been compromised. So it's just warning the user and telling him that for security reasons, we are temporarily unable to complete bank transfers. Of course, any other example would be good. So in conclusion, the amount of JavaScript code is increasing. Client-side threats are becoming more and more sophisticated. And uh, having security controls in place is now mandatory. For instance, PSD2 already forces you to have such controls on the client side in order to meet the compliance. So we have or are working in a solution that combines JavaScript code protection with real-time monitoring. It's a simple solution, efficient, transparent. You only need to add the JavaScript to the page, and it doesn't break your application code. Um, you can see exactly what has rendered, what the code has exactly executed on the client side. You can deploy customized uh, reactions to what is happening. And obviously, everything that you do on the client side is defeatable by definition. But this is about raising the bar and, and making it very costly for an attacker to be successful. So if attacks keep failing, we all know that usually what they do is they move to the next target. This is all I have for today. Thank you.